with all that said, it's time to start talking about polynomial rules. A polynomial is a type of function built up from the power function. So it's, um, well, maybe, maybe we should go sort of reverse of the usual order. I'll give you two examples and then we'll formally define it. P of x equals 4x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 1 is a polynomial. Q of x equals negative x to the fifth plus x to the fourth plus x cubed plus 1 is a polynomial. And if you look at what these functions have in common, they're both a bunch of power functions being added. That is to say, we've got a bunch of expressions of the form number times x raised to another number, and we're taking all of those little expressions and we're adding them together. You'll notice that in both these examples, all of the powers are positive whole numbers. I don't have any examples with negative powers. I don't have any examples with fractional powers. Thank you. That's a requirement for polynomials. If I were to try to formalize this, I would say that a polynomial is some number times x raised to a power plus some other number times x raised to the next lowest power plus some other number times x raised to the next lowest power until we run out of powers. Until we get down to the first power and then we're allowed to have one term that is not attached to a power, a constant term. So this n has to be a whole number, a counting number, positive counting number. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. If n is that, then so is n minus one, n minus two, and so on. I mean, if we start with a seventh power, then we've got a six, a fifth, a fourth, a third, a second, and a first power together with one term that isn't attached to a power. And that's the basic idea behind a polynomial. If you go back here, you might object that that, that me separate these so they're not blurring together. But, I mean, this first example Five. Third, second, first power, no power. That's exactly what I said a polynomial was. You might 
be objecting that we're missing powers in this second thing that I'm calling a polynomial. But that's fine. I mean, think about quadratics. I say that a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c, but 2x squared plus 1 is still a quadratic. It's missing the b term. That's okay. 3x squared minus x is still a quadratic. It's missing the c term. That's okay. We can have missing terms. If, we, if it really bothered us, we could think that, well, we have a 0x squared term and a 0x term. And then, if I'm remembering that's right, that was a plus 1. So, we can be missing terms. That's fine. Doesn't stop it from being a polynomial. The terms could even be written out, out of order if you wanted to. Like, it's more traditional to write the polynomial this way. But if you wanted to say p of x is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, perfectly nice polynomial. Again, sort of harking back to uh, quadratics, you'll notice that I don't have numbers written down in front of the x terms here. But just like when we used the quadratic formula, we can mentally insert ones in front of those x's if we want. To. So this is a perfectly nice um, polynomial. Let's start by stating some sort of elementary, elementary is never a good word, some starting definitions that will get us started with this topic. And the first and probably the most important definition is the degree. And the degree is just the largest power that appears in the polynomial. Looking at our example so far, we have x raised to the first, second, and third power. Three is the largest of those numbers. It's a degree three polynomial. Here, first example, we have the third, second, and first power. It's a degree, let me try to differentiate this. It's a degree three polynomial. Down here, we've got five, four, three, and then that constant term. Five is the largest of those numbers. So it's a degree five polynomial. And the degree of a polynomial is probably the single most important thing about it. It controls a lot of very important things about the polynomial. We'll get into that a little later. Very closely related to the degree is the leading term. 
So the degree is the largest power that appears in the polynomial. And every time a power appears in the polynomial, it's got a number in front of it, and then an x, and then up here, the power. So somewhere in this polynomial, we are going to see a sub n times x raised to the degree of the polynomial. And that expression is called the leading term. And closely related to the degree, the leading term tells us a lot about the polynomial. So this is a degree 3 polynomial. We look for the third power. It's there, the leading term is 1x cubed. Of course, multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything. You could leave that off if you wanted to. Here, this is a degree 3 polynomial. I'm looking at p of x. The leading term is 4x cubed. Q of x is negative x to the fifth, plus some other stuff. It's a degree 5 polynomial, and negative x to the fifth is the leading term. So the leading term, we're going to see why it's important by the end of the class. But the five-second summary is that it controls the shape of the graph. Less important than either of these. But it would be good if you've at least heard these words, if you are going to go on to teach this or take a business class. The coefficients of the polynomial are just the numbers in front of the axes. So here, or Maybe here. Let me just, this is super cluttered. I think we can probably get away with one example. So let's unclutter this a little. Let's uncircle stuff. So the coefficients here are just the numbers in front of the x's. That four that negative 2, that positive 1. And I guess I kind of told a lie because this negative 1 is not in front of an x, but it does count as a coefficient. So the numbers in front of the x's plus any numbers that are just floating around by themselves. And because saying, repeatedly saying, all the numbers that are floating around by themselves would get very old very fast. Let's define the constant term to be the number not attached 
to an x. So here, let me, again, let me kind of unclutter this. So here the constant term is 1. It's by itself. It's not being multiplied by x to anything. Here, the constant term is this, sorry, is this negative one by itself, not being um, multiplied by x to anything. Let's see, if we... Forgetting when I select the eraser, I've got to go back. Um, if we had q of x equals x squared plus x, there's no constant term written down, but you could think of having a plus zero there. And your constant term is zero. So polynomials show up a lot in business. Um, I mean, they show up a lot in a lot of applications, but business is probably the easiest application to give that doesn't assume the students have any kind of particular background. In particular, I know we haven't put any graphs on the board yet, but this is a graph of a polynomial, something like x to the third plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 0. This is an example of a polynomial, and polynomials like this show up often when businesses are trying to model cars. So x here can be the number of units a business is manufacturing, and y can be the cost to manufacture these units. And for a while, we see what we expect. Um, as the number of units increases, the cost also increases. But then we see this flattening out. And that flattening out has a name. It's the economy of scale. Once you're bulk ordering stuff, or once you're really stepping up your manufacturing, you generally are spending less to produce an additional unit than when you start out. And eventually, economy of scale breaks down. This also has a name. When the economy of scale breaks down, it's a diseconomy of scale. 
So, I mean, this is just one example, and I mean, I know I haven't even put an equation for it on the board, but polynomials do show up a lot in application. Um, and I wanted to mention that explicitly because textbooks, most textbooks, I think, do a terrible job of providing any kind of motivation for polynomials. So it might not be much, but here's a motivation. If you're going to take business classes and look at cost curves and revenue curves, you're going to run into third degree polynomials. Now that we've tried to motivate the general topic, let's try to motivate the degree and the leading term. I've said that um, these things control the shape of a polynomial. And what you'll notice if you go to desmos.com and start just generating sort of polynomial was at random. Is that they can see quite complicated behavior. Like this polynomial here comes up, then it goes down, then it bounces up again, then it comes down again, then it increases again. So we can have quite complicated graphs when we're looking at polynomials. That's the bad news, and there's not really any getting around it. The good news is that we do have some idea what a polynomial looks like. Let's see, how do I want to say this? I probably want to just say it kind of informally. Every polynomial looks like its leading term from a bird's eye point of view. And to clarify that, let's go back. To Desmos, and let's take a look at 4x to the fifth. So 4x to the fifth is being selected because it's the leading term of this polynomial. And let me let me think. Purple and orange. If you look at these curves, they do not immediately scream out that these two curves look the same. I mean, here's the polynomial going down here. Here's the curve that I'm claiming it looks like. You can very clearly see 
differences between these curves. But of course, it wasn't my claim that every polynomial would just looks like its leading term. I qualified that by saying that we have to be looking at the polynomial from a bird's eye point of view. So let's zoom out. And what's going to happen if we zoom out is it's just going to sort of turn into a blur. That's not very instructive. So why don't I manually control the x's? That's that x go from negative 15 to positive 15. Here are my two curves. Zoom out some more, readjust the axis, keep zooming out, we are nearly there, let's readjust the axis, probably did not mean to zoom in. Let's readjust the x's, perhaps one last time. There. I think this is a pretty good view of the polynomials. You can see, I know, orange isn't Orange isn't the most visible color. It's supposed to be good for colorblind students, but maybe we can just use black for that one. So here is the original polynomial. Let me widen that thickness so that it's easy to see from the back of the room. Here is 4x to the fifth, the leading term. Again, let me widen the thickness. From this bird's eye point of view, we're very zoomed out now. We're looking at numbers around positive 5,000, positive 50,000, I think, down to negative 100,000. But at this magnification, these curves look identical. I mean, if somebody were truly just completely colorblind and could not see a difference between purple and blue, for example, there is no way for that student to tell which of these curves they're looking at, whether it's the original curve or the leading term. So, you do have to zoom out and look at this from a very sort of magnified or whatever the opposite of magnified is, very zoomed out point of view. But once you do that, this polynomial and its leading term do look the same. So we've at least got that. And this is a pretty strong statement, actually, because the leading term is a power function. It's a sub n x to the n. And it's not just any power function. Some power, I mean, a power function could have a negative power. 
Three x to the negative fifth is a power function. Or a power function could have a fractional power. x to the one half is a power function. Because this is coming from a polynomial, we know that this n isn't a fraction. We know that this n isn't negative. We know that that n is a positive whole number. And that's really valuable to us because every power function where the power is a positive whole number looks basically like one of four graphs. So there are limits to what these polynomials can look like. I guess if, if I don't watch myself, I just sort of start talking non-stop. Does anybody have any questions about the material that's been presented so far? Then. Every polynomial from a very zoomed out bird's eye point of view, is going to have one of four graphs, basically. And the determining factors are that this positive whole number could be even or odd. And this number in front of the power could be positive or negative. So four combinations, positive even, positive odd, negative even, negative odd. Let's look at even powers. And I'll make the observation that we've already looked at polynomials with even powers. We didn't use that word, but quadratic are degree two polynomials. So a quadratic looks like this or like this, and that's true basically for any polynomial or power function, I guess I should say, that has an even whole number as a power. And just like with quadratics, positive opened up, negative opened down, so it is with all of these power functions. Let us see. Get rid of all of this. Let's default the zoom and look at the power function. 2x to the fourth. Well, there are differences between a fourth degree power and a second degree power. If you zoom in this, okay, complete the indistinguishable. There we go. Um, if we zoom in, the second degree power is kind power function is kind of pointier. 
power. The fourth degree power function is very flat at its base. So there are differences, but they're still both basically looking like this. And that is true if I have a sixth power. You know, it's still basically looking like a bull. Um, the higher the power, the flatter that bull is going to get. But all of these power functions with a positive number out here and an even power look basically like that. And if I make this negative, <laughs> this is just what I said would happen on the whiteboard. And similarly, if I make this negative, or if I make this negative. So that's option, options one and two. I guess these are the cases where the power is even. When when the powers are odd, we get graphs that look like this. Increasing quickly, flatten out, slow down increasing, then start increasing quickly again. So precisely the kind of graph I said that economists and business professors use to model a cost. This is if the A sub N is positive. If, let's just undo that. If the A sub N is negative, it flips it over the axis. Now it's coming down, flattening out, and then resuming its descent. Let us take a look. So let's make all of these positive to start with. And let's just add one to all these powers to make them odd. 11, 3, and 5. And as I said, these are behaving just like I said on the whiteboard. Come up, fatten out, resume going up. Come up, fatten out, resume going up. Come up, fatten out, then resume going up. So the amount that it fattens out, uh, the bigger the power, the flatter it gets, and kind of the more it looks like two vertical lines. But the basic shape for these odd powers is always the same. Go up, fatten out, go back. And if I make this negative, it does just what I said it should. We actually talked about this before in, when we were talking about vertical and horizontal shifts. We also talk about what happens if you take a curve 
and put a negative number in front of it. Put 2x cubed, put a negative sign in front of it. 5x to the 11th, put a negative sign in front of it. So we are seeing the behavior I predicted or said we would observe on this frame. And what this means, combined with combined with this, is that from a bird's eye point of view, every polynomial has one of four possible shapes. It looks like that, or it looks like that, or it looks like that, or it looks like that. So polynomials are, comp are sort of simultaneously very complicated, but also limited. I mean, it's very easy to create a polynomial with all kinds of kind of wonky features, like to create a polynomial that goes up and then comes down, and then flattens out, and then keeps coming down, and then starts going up again. If you look at this thing with this magnification, it looks very complicated. If you look at it from a bird's eye point of view, What is happening? X is not being allowed to be nearly big enough. That's why we're seeing so little of the curve. There we go. If we look at this from a bird's eye point of view, all of those complications go away. It looks like a polynomial with an odd degree and a positive coefficient out front. In other words, it looks like that. So polynomials are simultaneously simple and complicated. It depends kind of with what degree of magnification you're investigating them at. And that is a wrap for today. I will not see you tomorrow. I will perhaps see you Thursday. I will post an announcement letting you know.